Hey everyone, this is Nick, and I have a bad case of the man flu. So yeah, bear with me, because my voice is probably going to be pretty bad today. So in this episode, we've got Mozilla sued for allegedly discriminating against an employee after they came back from their medical leave for treating cancer. We also have some big solid performance boosts for Intel CPUs coming to the Linux kernel, and we also have Nvidia finally landing the new driver version that maybe, hopefully this time, will fix every problem with Wayland and Nvidia. And we also have this segue to our sponsor. It's ground news. You can click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to follow along while I'll tell you more. Ground News was founded by a former NASA engineer who wanted a more objective way to read the world's news. For example, this story I recently found on OpenAI finding that Russian and Chinese groups are using its technology for propaganda campaigns. Ground News comes through their network of over 50,000 news sources to show that over 60 articles had reported on this story, but you might have missed it if you only follow conservative news. So for each news article in Ground News, you can see how credible the sources are and who funds them all factors that could influence their reporting. Then you can compare all sides of the same story to see the full picture from all political sides, or you can sort by any of these factors to find the type of information you prefer. Of course, I can also follow specific topics and create a personalized news feed to avoid being bombarded by unrelated info. For example, you can follow your favorite topics like tech or AI. Plus, their discovery page makes it really easy to find new interests and trusted sources. You can go to the link in the description to save 40% on the same Vantage plan I use for unlimited access to all their features. Subscribing not only gets you access to features like Blindspot or My News Bias that lets you see which news you're more interested in and the bias they have, but it also helps support my work. Okay, so this is not a good look for Mozilla if it's true, but it looks like their chief product officer is suing them for discrimination. Steve Texera took medical leave for cancer treatment at the end of October 2023 until February 2024, at which point he returned to Mozilla. As soon as he came back, he was apparently instructed to lay off 50 people, 40 of which were from his own team. When he brought his concerns about this, as Mozilla was profitable and there was no real financial reason to remove these people, the then-new CEO Laura Chambers suggested that he moves to a different role for cancer treatment, which he wasn't even receiving anymore at the time. When he found out that he did, in fact, need additional treatment for liver cancer, Mozilla's CEO offered him a 40% pay cut and a demotion. At that point, they even apparently told him to accept the role and get to work, or accept the role and take a medical leave, or they would start talking about severance. Texera is thus suing Mozilla for discrimination. Obviously, Mozilla is denying those claims, because whatever the truth of the matter is, you never admit to wrongdoing in any of these cases. And if this is true, this is a really, really bad look for Mozilla's management. It's a terrible thing to do to someone who needs help, not needs a kick in the ass. And Texera is apparently credited for growing Firefox uh, and making it profitable again and growing Mozilla's ad business as well. And if you can believe him, he was apparently earmarked for maybe being the next CEO before he took his medical leave. The previous CEO was unexpectedly fired by the board and replaced by Laura Chambers. So we'll see how it goes, but this is not good. Now the latest NVIDIA drivers are here. Version 555 now supports explicit sync, meaning that Linux users who have an NVIDIA GPU should give another go to Wayland. This feature is now also supported in GNOME 46.1, in Plasma 6.1, and it means that you should no longer have latency issues, graphical glitches, crashes, and other problems when using Wayland with an NVIDIA GPU. Frame pacing issues should also be mostly solved. Other changes include a fix to make video capture more stable, better support for prime render offloading, so for hybrid laptops for example, plus fixes for various crashes and kernel panics. Color accuracy should also be improved, 
Vulcan support has been enhanced as well, notably with support for the immediate presentation mode, which can let you disable VSync on Wayland and thus get better latency at the expense of screen tearing. So that's great news for NVIDIA users. If you have access to these drivers on a rolling release distro or through a PPA and you're using GNOME 46.1 or Plasma 6.1, you probably should give the Wayland session another go. I personally was not affected by these problems as far as I could tell, but I will still perform the update and maybe try running my laptop in NVIDIA only mode just to see if things work normally. Now we have a date for the Cosmic Alpha and it is far from the one that they had initially announced. They initially planned it for March if I remember correctly but it was pushed back time and again and now they're saying the Alpha will be in late July which probably means a new version of Pop! OS with this new desktop will not be available before the end of 2024. The branding for the desktop has also been revealed with a stylized font and a stretched O for Cosmic that evokes a monitor. And as they say, it's O as in open source. The logo is thus just that O underlined in orange. They're celebrating the announcement with a sale with a few discounts on various laptops and desktops that they sell. And they have Cosmic merch on order right now. If you're really hyped and you want to buy something, even before knowing if the desktop will be any good or even any better than what we have currently. So I guess we'll have to wait for the end of July to know if it's actually any good. And I understand why they keep pushing it back. It's better to have an alpha with all the features that you want to showcase to users, even if there are bugs around that, uh, than to have an alpha lacking half the stuff that you're planning on releasing in the first stable version, because that doesn't give the right impression. I will admit my hype for Cosmic has died down a little. The more they show about it, the more it just looks like yet another desktop which doesn't do much new compared to what you can already do on GNOME, KDE or Cinnamon. But it's still a interesting new stack, new code base without any legacy weird stuff like what GNOME or KDE can have. So it will be interesting to review and I will absolutely give it a fair shot in a dedicated video. Now, still on desktops, there it is. GNOME 47 can now be built without X11 support. This means that any distribution that wants to ditch the old display server can now provide GNOME as a Wayland only option, as the desktop doesn't require any of X11's built dependencies. This closes a two year old issue to make GNOME more X11 independent. This does not mean GNOME won't support X11 ever again. Any distro that wants to build it with X11 support can still do that, of course. But some distros have already announced that they wanted to phase out X11 in the future. Fedora, for example, already stopped providing an X11 session by default for Plasma, and they already have a proposal for Fedora 41 to do the same thing with the GNOME edition. And even if it's not for Fedora 41, it will happen sooner or later because Red Hat Enterprise Linux 10 announced they would drop X11 entirely. And I am sure that for the foreseeable future, most distributions will still offer GNOME with either the X11 or the Wayland session you'll be able to pick. But in the future, at some point, let's be clear, GNOME will drop X11 entirely. It can be in two years, five years, 10 years, who knows, but it will happen. And KD will probably do the same at some point in the future. Meaning that if you really want to stick with X11 for the long run, you're probably going to have to stick to another desktop environment or a tiling window manager made specifically for X11. Now also additional precision, as far as I understand it, compiling GNOME shell and Mutter without X11 support doesn't mean you can't run X11 apps inside of Wayland. X Wayland apparently still works perfectly. It's just the GNOME shell and Mutter that are compiled without any X11 libraries. Intel users might get a performance boost in the future. A new patch is being worked on for hybrid CPUs. So anything that has efficiency cores and performance cores. The goal is to make sure that the driver that handles the frequency scaling for these CPUs can account for the fact that each core is not equal in terms of how fast it can run. In turn, it means that each task should be attributed to the right type of core, which should lead to better efficiency, battery life and performance. 
There's no information yet on how much of an improvement this could yield, but it might make it in the kernel 6.11 if things go well. At any rate, whether that happens in the future or not, patches for more efficiency and more battery life and more performance are always good, so good work. And speaking of this, there's even more work on hybrid Intel CPUs, this time to grant up to 50% better performance in some cases. Apparently some Intel CPUs have buggy firmware, meaning that the recent P-State driver sometimes incurs a 50% performance hit if the system doesn't report certain ACPI capabilities. This affects most current kernels all the way back to 5.19. The patch will basically just use another avenue, another variable, to get the info on what the CPU is capable of, instead of relying on the potentially buggy firmware. And so the driver will now be able to enable Intel's Turbo Boost when it would previously not have been used. This, in turn, gives back the 50% performance that was lost and should help a lot of Intel 11, 12 and 13th gen users. This will be available in the kernel 6.10 and backports of this bug fix will be pushed to all currently supported kernel versions as well, including 5.19. And that's really, really good news. I'm not sure if my laptop is affected. I do have a 13th gen Intel CPU, but I never really noticed anything underwhelming in terms of performance. But as soon as I have confirmation that the patch has been pushed, to the kernel version I'm using, I will absolutely run some benchmarks and compare them with the benchmarks that I ran when I got the device, just to see if it changed anything. And let's finish this with the gaming news. First, Steam has launched game recording in beta. It's a simple feature that lets you record your gameplay on the Steam Deck and on the Steam Client. You can record in the background all the time with limits that you can set, or you can start recording at the press of a button. Developers can also plug into this system to show event markers on a recording timeline, and you can obviously share these clips. It is just a beta, and Jason Evangelo, formerly of Linux for Everyone, and now working for Thunderbird, he tested that thing, and it looks like it performs much better on the Steam Deck, where the performance drop is about 5%, compared to his own other gaming device, which took a much bigger hit. Valve is saying that they will have individual recording settings for each game in the future as well. Now this is nothing groundbreaking, you could already record your gameplay session using OBS or any other tool that you liked, but having this baked into Steam makes it a lot more accessible. OBS can be finicky on certain devices, it is a bit tricky to configure to have the right codec, the right settings, the right bit rates, so having Steam do that automatically if it's good quality and less impact because it's not a general purpose recording tool, might be better for a lot of people. We also have an improvement to the Mesa drivers coming, which should give a nice boost to games using lots of video. The issues with these games stems from the fact that Proton uses DXVK to render the game itself, meaning it's using Vulkan, when the videos themselves are played with GStreamer, which uses OpenGL. Mixing the two APIs in the same game isn't necessarily great, and the performance apparently suffers, especially in video-heavy titles like Blast Blue. The change in Mesa seems to be using compute shaders instead of uploading and downloading each video frame as a full image, and this seems to be a lot more efficient, rendering the same frames in two-thirds of the time it took previously. And on top of that, we have updates to the non-Steam launcher plugin for the Steam Deck, which lets you easily add launchers for non-Steam games, to your Steam Deck through the Decky Loader plugin system. This new version now supports MU Deck for easier emulation and Steam ROM Manager to add your games in, and it fixed Battle.net support as well. This means that with one single plugin, you can now let your Steam Deck easily access and show games from Amazon Games, Battle.net, EA, Epic Games, GOG Galaxy, Humble Games, Indie Gala, Itch.io, Legacy Games, Rockstar Games, Ubisoft, Glyph, PlayStation Plus, and VK Play, some of which I had never heard about, plus some various video streaming services and emulators. All of this with one single plugin and one single trip to uh, the desktop mode to install Decky Loader. I think it's really worth it if you have a lot of games that aren't in your Steam library. I don't think you'll regret adding that thing and having access to all your games in the nice Steam gaming interface. And I also think you won't regret listening to the segue to our sponsor. 
Tuxedo Computers makes laptops, desktops, and small form factor computers that run Linux out of the box. The advantage over buying something that comes with Windows is that you're fairly certain that everything that is inside the device will run because, well, they ship it with Linux. So it has the drivers. They actually contribute those drivers and fixes upstream. And if those fixes haven't been accepted yet, they have repos that you can add to a lot of popular distros to implement those fixes inside any distro. They have a wide range of devices that should fit every need and every price point. They release new models really often, so don't hesitate to check back on them. I only use Tuxedo computers these days. I run the channel on one of their laptops, I game on one of their desktops, and I basically don't use anything else. So if you need a new computer, you want to run Linux on it, and you want to support a company that actually contributes to Linux, click the link in the description below and get yourself a Tuxedo computer. They're really, really solid. Okay, so thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, even though my nose is stuffy and weird. And well, if you like the video, you know what to do. There are plenty of buttons underneath this little player. Uh, like, subscribe, comments, notifications, whatever. You know how things work. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are links in the description to support it as well. So thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.